Okay, so that's the mouth of the snake. Can you recognize what I've just drawn? I've just spread out what I've just shown you. Okay, that's our snake. That's the mouth. And inside the mouth, there is a group of capillaries with a special membrane. There's a ball of capillaries inside here covered by a special membrane. Okay, so can we identify different parts? So this is the Bowman's capsule. Remember, you will not be asked to draw, so you only need to know the structure for the sake of understanding the process, because that's what they will ask you. Okay? Now, and they may not even ask you the whole thing, because the whole thing would mean that it's going to be like, what, 20 marks, which is impossible. You know the most is 12 plus 8, right? Okay, so the Bowman's capsule is this region here. What's here inside the mouth of the so-called snake is basically what we call as glomerulus. Now, what is glomerulus? Simple. You know artery comes in, right? So what happens is it, the renal artery goes in and it breaks into further branches of arterioles. Remember, we are studying each unit of nephron. This is just one nephron, one unit. You have like millions of nephrons in your kidney, all right? So this is the afferent arteriole. And the one, the bottom here is efferent arteriole. Okay, so what happens is, the thing to take note is the diameter of the blood vessel, the arterial that goes into the glomerulus is large, but once it goes into the glomerulus, it basically becomes small little vessels. So that's an uh, effect of squeezing the blood vessel, which results in what? Increase in hydrostatic pressure. Okay, so the blood is going to flow here, and once it gets into this area, it's going to be squeezed the same way lymphatic fluid forms. The exact same way lymphatic fluid forms. You need to remember that. It's also because of high hydrostatic pressure. So the keyword here is high hydrostatic pressure. You get a mark for that. Okay? The only difference here is the capillaries inside here, the Bowman's capsule, the glomerulus, is wrapped with a very special membrane. And that special membrane basically ensures no large molecules can go up. Because the pressure in your nephron is way greater than the pressure in your lymphatic, um, uh, at the point where lymphatic fluid is formed, the interstitial fluid is formed. All right? That's also a leak in plasma, but not that great here. It's very great. So you need to prevent the leak of major uh, components like red blood cell, platelets, white blood cell. You don't want all this to go out. Okay? So keep that in mind. <coughs> so we have a high hydrostatic pressure, and at this point is where we will have leakage taking place. So things will move out due to the difference in pressure. This process is the most popular in the exam. It's the, it's the one that gets questions the most. And we call this as ultrafiltration. OK, we call this as ultrafiltration. Point by point, what is ultrafiltration? First step is to say high hydrostatic pressure. You may want to copy because I, I won't have time to wait later. Pressure generated. Oh, actually, you don't have to copy. There's a video. I forgot. High reserve pressure generated due to difference in arterial diameter. Okay? Second. Components of blood leaks out. It's very important for you to be able to list out what are the components that would leak out, okay? So, components of blood leaks into Bowman's capsule. So, it's very important to know what are the components that would actually leak. All that is water soluble will leak, so you need to remember that. So, one of the major components is water. What else? Glucose, amino acids. <coughs> the most 
important part because this is the one that gets questioned a lot. So water, glucose, amino acids, what else? Salts or you can call it as ions, yeah? Such as K plus, Cl minus, Na plus, so all these ions will be leaking out. They follow water. These ions, they love to follow water. Whatever water goes, they, they follow a lot. That's the idea. Okay? Water, glucose, amino acids, salts, and most importantly, urea. There will be other things also, but we only need these major things that we will have to talk about. This will form a liquid here, which I'm, which I'm marking in green. This liquid in green is now called as the glomerular filtrate. Glomerular filtrate. What is glomerular filtrate? There you go, this is it. This what you have here is your glomerular filtrate, these components. So water mixed with glucose, amino acids, salts, urea is your glomerular filtrate. Now this will move, once they are inside the tubule, our snake here, they would begin to move to this region where we call it as, what is it? That I told you earlier. PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. From there it will go to loop, loop of Henle, and then from there it will go to DCT, distal convoluted tubule, and the last part here will be collecting tubule. You can call it collecting duct. I like to use the word tubule because you can remember wherever, whatever place that we name as a tubule, you will have an additional process called secretion, which I'll come back to that later. Now what happens in PCT is second most popular thing to be questioned in exam after ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration is usually three marks. One mark for high hydrostatic pressure, another mark to say the difference in the diameter of the arteriole, one more mark to say components of blood that leaks, is this. Remember, large components such as red blood cell, white blood cell, <coughs> uh, platelets, they cannot go out because the, uh, the membrane that wraps them will not allow that. That's too big, so they remain inside. They will go into the PCT. Now this is important. What happens in PCT is an active transport. Active transport of glucose, amino acids, salts. This will happen in the PCT. It's an active transport. Okay? Now, due to the active transport of salts, which is the ions, water will move by osmosis. Okay? So, water moves by osmosis. Wherever water is reabsorbed, I'm going to tell you different places where water is reabsorbed. The reason water is reabsorbed is osmosis. But then again, how do we make osmosis happen? By actively pumping the salts. We play with the salts gradient. So when you keep increasing the concentration of the salt, water will move to that area because the osmotic pressure will become low. It's the opposite, remember? Okay? Water moves by osmosis. Remember, this is what happens. What happens in pro proximal convoluted tubule? The overall nail is reabsorption. <coughs> it's easy. Ultrafiltration here, reabsorption, 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 reabsorption. That's it. All of the tubules are just reabsorbing. PCT is the special one because here it will actively take up glucose, amino acids, salts, and water. All this is taken up. Water, remember, moves by osmosis, the rest is active transport. So there will be no more glucose and amino acid after this point onwards. You should not have unless you have diabetes. Now, why diabetic people have glucose in their urine, which is produced here at the end? Because excessive amount of glucose, the active transport will not be able to pump everything up. So before it could finish removing everything, the glucose will escape. And this point onwards, there is no more reabsorption of glucose. Okay, following? So this is very important. What happens next in loop of Henley? Basically just reabsorption, reabsorption of water and salts. Now you're wondering, what she keeps saying reabsorption, reabsorption, where does these things go, right? Because what I didn't draw here is the capillaries. 
So there are capillaries all around here. So there's capillaries that connects all around here. This is what you saw in that picture just now. So it's all over this place. These are capillaries. So when I say reabsorb, they will go out of the tubule into the capillaries that's right next to them. That's what we mean by reabsorption. Okay? Now reabsorption and H2O happens everywhere. In the loop of Henle, happens in distal convoluted tubule, even happens in the collecting tubule. Whenever you use the word tubule, just remember they have reabsorption. But reabsorption of water and salt follows your need. Do you have excessive salt in your body due to what you consumed in your food? Then your body will have to release more. So the active transport would decrease. So that would follow the concentration. Okay? So if you need more water, you're obviously more reabsorption will take place. Mainly, reabsorption that is influenced by the level of your osmotic pressure happens in the collecting tubule. So we'll do water <coughs> regulation next class, but this is where it happens. Okay, then it goes up here. All this is just reabsorption, yeah? All this is reabsorption of salt and water according to the need. So it's just all salt and water. Again, same idea, salt and water. But along these tubules, which is PCT, DCT, and CT, you have an additional process that will take place. Okay, I need you to remember this process called secretion. Secretion is an active process of eliminating waste, which means there are some things that will be actively, when I say active is an active transport, dumped into the tubule. What? Well, dumped into the tubule. What are they? Urea, hydrogen ions, salts. When you have excessive salt in your body, they will be actively dumped into the tubule. All right, this is the active process. If you notice so far, <coughs> reabsorption, I only told you glucose, amino acid, salts, water. I didn't talk about urea at all, correct? Because urea will not be reabsorbed. It is the major component that we consider as waste and toxic. So we want to get rid of it. So it moves from here to here. By the time you reach the collecting tubule, you're going to obviously to the pelvis region of the um, kidneys. So remember the region in the middle, empty region. From there, it's going to go to the ureter and bladder. So what's coming up is just urine. What's urine? Urine is water, urea, and salts. Again, salts will be according to what you need. If you don't consume a lot of salt, then obviously there's going to be less salt in your urine because your body will try to conserve. We need sodium, potassium, chlorine for our nervous system functioning and muscle system functioning. That's really important. Now what happens in collecting tubule is a bit special. Collecting tubule <coughs> is sensitive to ADH. ADH stands for antidiuretic hormone. It is the hormone that is responsible for osmoregulation. Regulation of water. If you still remember, it is the posterior pituitary glands hormone. When the hypothalamus detects that the blood has less water, it will secrete less antidiuretic hormone. Sorry, more antidiuretic hormone. Less water. I say less water, right? Okay. I'm speaking so fast that I can process my brain. Okay? Because we're running out of time. Um, less water in the blood means high osmotic pressure or low osmotic pressure? High osmotic pressure, okay? Highest body pressure is less water in the blood. It's the opposite. Always remember that. So what happens is your anterior pituitary gland, sorry, your posterior pituitary gland will release ADH. ADH will come and change the way this tissue in the collecting tubule work. It will make the collecting tubule to absorb more water than before. So when you have a lot of ADH, lots and lots of H2O will be reabsorbed into the blood. Why? Because your body is trying to kind of even the osmotic pressure. We want to bring back the water level to normal. So what happens to urine? What happens to the urine? Urine becomes more concentrated because you have less water in the urine because water is being reabsorbed. So if you consume a lot of water, there's going to be less antidiuretic hormone in your body and your urine is going to be more dilute. Now, please remember, I'm going to recap everything. Ultrafiltration takes, takes place in the Bowman's capsule. 
Why does ultrafiltration happen? Because of the high hydrostatic pressure produced by the difference in the arterioles that comes to the Bowman's capsule. What forms in the Bowman's capsule is glomerular filtrate. What it is, water, glucose, amino acids, salts, and urea, and other waste substances. And they will move to the first tubule, which is the proximal convoluted tubule. Here, there will be active uptake, which means active transport to take up back glucose, amino acids, and salt. All of glucose and all of amino acids are taken. Nothing is left behind. All of it is taken. Some amount of salt is taken. Water will move into the capillary by osmosis. Then, of course, not all of the salts will be taken, only some. There will still be water and there will be urea left. They would move down to loop of Henle. Here, further uptake of salt and water will happen. They will move to then distal converted tubule. Further uptake of water and salt takes place, and then move finally to collect, collecting tubule, and then eventually to the uh, pelvis region, and then eventually to the ureter, and then bladder, and then urethra. So, wherever you see the word tubule, an extra process takes place, that will be secretion. What is secretion? Active process of eliminating waste from the capillaries into the tubules. Buang lah, active buang. What are the things that normally secreted into the tubules? Urea, hydrogen ions, and salts. Salts is according to how much you have. Hydrogen ion is important because if you have excessive hydrogen ion, your blood becomes acidic. You need to get rid of them. ADH is released in response to the level of water in your blood. So if you have less water in your blood, ADH will be released. That will make the tubules membrane to be more permeable to water. More water will be moving, will be reabsorbed into your blood. So your osmotic pressure will return back to normal. So urine forms. What is urine? Water, urea, and salt. Levels of water and salt depends on your intake, how much you drink, how much you take salt. Urea, on the other hand, is usually constant. That's why if you don't drink a lot of water, you're dehydrated, your urine will burn. When you pass your urine, you will feel a burning sensation because urea is toxic. When you have less water, the concentration of urea is greater, and when you pass your urine, it will burn, and that's really bad for you. Okay? Because you constantly do that, you're going to damage your urinary tract, that's going to set infection in. That's the whole thing. Oops. Time out. Okay, any questions? Okay, <laughs> any questions you guys uh, process in your mind next week, you can ask me. Okay?